Hey, y'all. So I saw a video and an interview from a colleague of mine, Ben Cloward, who was talking through some of the sample shaders that have been created within this sample project and realized that a lot of my students, when I showed them this, were not aware that it was here. So I'm making this video, hopefully in five to 10 minutes, just to show you all what it is, how to get to it, and how to make the best use of it. So I'm inside of Unity 6.2 right now. Uh, just being in Unity 6 is more than good enough to get access into this. And I believe it was released technically just under a year ago. So anything within that time frame would be totally reasonable to open this in. If you want to get to it, this is the sample scene. I'm going to go into Window, Package Manager, open up my Unity Registry or go to M Projects, go into Shader Graph, over into Samples, Come down and grab production ready shaders. So this is effectively the scene that we were just looking at in the other screen. And from within here, I can get into shader graph 17.2 production ready. And I'm going to go into scenes, but just know that you can also get back out here and look into prefabs and see each of these, pull them into your existing scenes and start to pick all of this stuff apart. But if you go into scenes and then I'm in an HDRP project, so I'm going to go ahead and launch the HDRP project sample scene, you're going to get something that looks a bit like this. And now there are a few different ways that you can get through and explore what each of these are. But fundamentally, the easiest way to do this, just to get some context, is going to be to click on this very top item and see that you have a shader graph production ready shaders showcase script. So I can actually jump between these. And anything that you see, I'm going to turn off gizmos just for the time being. Anything that you see in here, you can get in and open up the shader graph. Some really cool, impressive stuff happening here. The one thing that I'll warn you about is on something as complex as recreating the HDRP lit shader, but all in shader graph instead of in script, it's going to be a gnarly shader, but it will have the entire shader built out for you so you can start to play with it. But just to give you a quick taste of what that would look like, this is starting to show you what that network would be. And it is uh, not to dog on uh, Unreal Engine, but this reminds me of like going back into my Unreal days and creating a wild blueprint and would just not be the most wieldy thing. So you'd want somebody who's more uh, adept with, with your shaders to be going in and doing these things. As you come over and you move into something like our material projection decal system, you can see running water here. So if you're looking at one of these and you want to see what it would look like moving it around and understanding how this decal works, you can turn on your gizmos up here in the top right and start to slide this around. And you'll see exactly what is happening here. So then if you want to open up something more like this, you can come back over into our production ready shaders and you can open the example shader here and see that it's something a lot more palatable as far as getting in and starting to play around with this stuff. So that's what I would encourage you to do is to continue through here and continue to look at what you might use. So let's continue on ourselves. I'm going to turn back off the gizmos just so we can see this stuff clearly can see water caustics, water wetness, can see grass, clover, nettle, and ferns. And for each of these, we're going to have our own shader that we are looking at. So this one's likely going to have a lot of vertex displacement coming up here into the position of your vertices and a lot of really neat nodes that you can dig in and start to understand how they're working and why. Here we have some pebbles in the background. And we've got our rock shader, some water shaders for lakes, a simple foam mask, water stream falls, and a regular water stream. Just kind of scrolling the UVs right there. If we continue along, we can start to see some of the really cool weather effects as well. So this is a rain effect with some puddling towards the back. 
If we look at this effect, nothing too, too crazy. So the cool thing is once we've seen the shader, if you want to go back into the scene and select the object itself, you can then see that shader here and how it's being, uh, it's having exposed variables. So I could change the rain intensity and pull that down. Could turn the wetness down, could turn it up. You can start to see how that's going to look. And our puddle size can grow over time as things continue to rain. Really neat stuff here. All right, so let's come back into our showcase and continue through here. So here we had rain in general. This is rain on floor. Rain on a rock. Some more examples of rain. Gosh, this is looking pretty damn cool, isn't it? And lastly, we have snow. So if we wanted to come over here and see snow, I have a feeling this is going to be a shader that I could rotate this and the snow will stay on the top part of it. Okay, love that. Gonna go back up to the top, continue along. And here we can see a block out grid. So this would be a simple shader to a one meter cube that you could then scale and stretch and figure out how you're blocking something out. As well as an ice shader. Damn. Really nice stuff here. So as we continue along, this is one of the, the cooler parts here being that it actually doesn't just show you all of these separate shaders, but this scene also contains a nice step-by-step -step tutorial on how you can take these shaders and kind of weave them all into each other and make sure that they're all going to work for you to create your own multi-step environment. So let's go ahead and just take a look at this. So we have sculpting terrain. Uh, I fully intend to do a video in the upcoming weeks on the terrain tool, just so that everyone's on the same page there and we're all using the same best practices. So let's say you sculpt your terrain. Once you've painted your terrain materials, you can then continue along and add in water, which we saw plenty of good water shader work just previously in this scene. Let's say we wanna add in a waterfall can select this. And can start to see what that looks like and how it works. So it does have geometry here. Very nice. And we continue through, Let's say we add in a rock, I'm sure this rock has a nice shader on it that we could then take and customize. We have a lot of textures here, detail scale, some maps that we're using. Really nice stuff. I'm gonna turn on rain here so we can see what that looks like a bit. Let's say maybe I turn off the moss. So now you can start to see how, wow, you could leverage these pieces. It's nice that the rain just applies to the normals facing up, really. Let's continue on through. You can add in water decals. So if we continue stepping through this, we can start to see what that looks like as well. We'll get some nice caustics here can add in reflection probes to get some nice reflections here. And then add in terrain detail meshes. Some really nice foliage there. And then we're back to our HDRP lit. So we're not going too deep into anything uh, or 
picking apart any individual shaders, but I just wanted to make sure that I, I show you all what this is, how it works, and how to get in here and start playing with it. If you want to get in and start to kind of mess with any of these shaders without having to go through that showcase function that I showed in the inspector, just select one of the objects, come over here on the right in the inspector, scroll down to the material, go to select shader, it will pull that shader up for you over here in the project. Double click that and it will open it for you where you can poke around as you desire. So I hope that you found this helpful. Get in here, start playing with all of these, their different values, understanding how they work, and good luck on your journey to building shaders in your project. I hope that this gives you a head start and a leg up. I hope you're having a great day. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next one.